2020. My name is Sergey Baklakov. I continue my video blog today from Samara, one of those amazing Russian cities on the embankments of Volga River. Wide and beautiful Volga River, Mother Volga. In the Soviet days, Samara was known as Kuybyshev, named after significant politician Valerian Kuybyshev. In the years of the Second World War, Kuybyshev, Samara, became so-called backup capital of Russia. Stalin, when he saw that Nazis are coming closer and closer to Moscow, he decided to evacuate a lot of factories from Moscow to Kuybyshev. But not only, also diplomats, the embassies of uh, many countries like the United States, France, Cuba, Canada, uh, Sweden and more. Besides that, here was evacuated the collective of Bolshoi Theater of Moscow, Grand Theater of Moscow, all this stuff and decorations. But also, together with his family, here was evacuated from already seized Leningrad, Dmitry Shostakovich, one of the most significant and greatest composers ever. And that's where he finished his legendary epic 7th Leningradske Symphony dedicated to the siege of Leningrad. And that's where he started to rehearse it with the musicians of the Bolshoi Orchestra of Bolshoi Theater. And that's where here was the very first premiere of the Seventh Symphony at the 5th of March 1942. You get it? So today it's 78th anniversary of the very first premiere. At first it was a, a here in Kuybyshev on the scene of uh, Kuybyshev Opera and Ballet Theater then went to Moscow, Novosibirsk, and finally got to London, New York, and just spread the whole world, showing what a nightmare is the Second World War. And today, at the 78th anniversary of the Seventh Symphony of Shostakovich, here I'm gonna track the life of Dmitry Shostakovich in Kuybyshev. Let's get started! Samara is an old Russian town founded yet in 1586. To 1941 it was already a developed city connected to Moscow with railroads and Volga River. Also not as far and not as cold as Urals or Siberia. So it was really the best place for evacuation of powers of Moscow. In the same time there was a new opera theater. That's why not only fabrics but also Bolshoi theater was evacuated there. Meanwhile, 35 years old, Dmitry Shostakovich was in his fatherland St. Petersburg, back then called Leningrad. They never let him go to the battlefront. He was doing only backside work as fireman. He was on duty on the roof of Leningrad Conservatory to put out the fire from incendiary bombs. That's where from the world-famous photography of Dmitry Shostakovich in the fire helmets, which is in July 1942 was published on the cover of Times came from. Nazis were coming closer and squeezing the circle of siege around Leningrad tighter and tighter. The first three or four parts of Seventh Symphony Shostakovich composed under the sounds of bombs and air raid warnings in Leningrad, often being on duty on those roofs and the roof of St. Petersburg Conservatory, completely inspired by pain suffers, murders, but at the same time with bravery and an exceptional belief of people into the victory. An adequate people in the Soviet government knew that Shostakovich will do more with his music than doing a military job like a soldier or a fireman. So almost by force, by special order, they evacuated him, his wife, son and daughter to Kuybyshev as well. The school number 81, the first address of Dmitry Shostakovich, an artist of uh, the Bolshoi, lived here. And uh, Dmitry Shostakovich with his family, um, just in the classrooms, they are divided their places with uh, just a blankets. The conditions wasn't that good at all. 
Frunze Street, the house number 140, built in 1905, such a typical quality pre-revolutionary building. And that's where after school number 81, Shostakovich got a room, 22 meters room. And we know this for sure because he's a friend, Isaac Glickman. He published the book with the correspondence uh, with uh, Shostakovich. And Shostakovich himself wrote it that he lived here and that, that was a warm room, everything is good. The only bad thing that worried him that uh, they lived all together in one room and uh, that was a problem for him like to to finish his symphony Frunze 140 is located in front of uh, military headquarters of Volga region such a brutal building looks there's still the red star like a red army star in a couple of months finally Dmitry Shostakovich family moved just two buildings next from Frunze 140 to Frunze 146. Into this building where finally he got a separate apartment, two room apartments. And again to Isaac Glickman, he wrote that the best thing out of it is that finally he has his separate room where he can work and to finish the symphony. And he finished it in the very end of 1941, at the 27th of December, 1941. My symphony is covered by the events of 1941. In our fight against fascism, our recent victory over the enemy, my own city Leningrad, I will dedicate this song. Now I will play the first part of the 7th symphony. actually only 200 meters from opera and ballet theater which is there and look now the street which starts from opera and ballet theater to the embankments look to so the embankments of Volga river that's now Dmitry Shostakovich streets named after him But Frunze 146 wasn't the last place to live for Shostakovich and his family. Later he moved even more further. The yellow residential building at Vilonovskaya Street, House 2A, in front of Iversky Monastery. In 1942, Dmitry Shostakovich worked hard to bring the rest of his family. Eight more people, his mother, his sister and more relatives. And uh, they lived, 12 people, 
including Shostakovich in four-room apartments. And that was his last address in Kuybyshev. Going deeper and deeper in our story from Frunze Street, House 146, where Dmitry Shostakovich finished his seventh symphony by the street, which is nowadays named after him. We raised uh, Kuybyshev Square and where it's located the uh, Samara Opera and Ballet Theater. That's where Dmitry Shostakovich, as soon as he finished his work, he started to rehearse. Rehearse it with the musicians of Bolshoi Theater. Kuybyshev Samara Opera Theater was built in 1931. The monumental, brutal building made in a so-called late pylon style, amended by brutal classics. Nowadays considered as a bright example of 1930s architecture. The work of the theater began with a performance of Mussorgsky's opera Boris Godunov. It is quickly became one of the biggest musical theaters of Russia, another citadel for what is now known as the Great Russian School, uh, Russian classical operas and ballads of uh, Russian composers like Tchaikovsky, Glinka, Rimsky, Korsakov, Dergamushsky, and uh, Borodin. In a wartime during 1941-1943, it actually became a branch of Bolshoi Theater of Moscow. The stars of Bolshoi, they were all evacuated here, including the orchestra. So Dmitry Shostakovich had a great chance to begin the rehearsals with actually one of the best symphony orchestras in the Soviet Union, an orchestra of Bolshoi Theater of Moscow, conducted by Samuil Samasud. It is taking only two months between the end of symphony and the very first premiere here on this scene of Samara Opera Theater at the 5th of March 1942. Before the main entrance to the theater, the monument to Valerian Kuybyshev, a Russian revolutionary Red Army officer and prominent Soviet politician. He died in 1935 and since then, in order to commemorate his name, uh, Samara was renamed to Kuybyshev. The historical name of Samara was returned only in 1991 in order to relate it more to history, culture and geography because Samara goes not only along Volga River but also along smaller Samara River. At the right side from the main entrance to theater here is now the uh, monument to Dmitry Shostakovich full land sculpture made by the sculptor Zurab Tseritelli. It's really hard to overrate Dmitry Shostakovich. He lived here relatively not long, just one year and a half, but that was enough to leave one of the most lightful pages of the history for the city. And the city proud of him. The music school, the streets named after Dmitry Shostakovich, the memorial boards and uh, the monuments. Also, uh, there's going to be the festival named after Dmitry Shostakovich. Dmitry Shostakovich Festival in Samara. Earlier in the morning, many people, mostly the workers of music schools and universities, came to commemorate Shostakovich and laid flowers to his monuments, like this woman, the head of music school number one, now named after Dmitry Shostakovich. His sister, who was a piano teacher, worked there during evacuation, and Shostakovich himself was coming to students with uh, what we uh, now would call a master class. I also forgot to mention this square, now also renamed to Shostakovich Square. <laughs> My weapon was the music. Необходимо очень отчетливо понимать, что Шостакович это величие, мощь, невероятнейшая глубина композиторской мысли. И это мы понимаем. Он гений на века. 
And now, well, yet yeah, enough of time until the concert tonight. Let's take a walk by Kuybyshev Street, which is not only the central street of the historical city center of Samara, but also the one which is uh, dedicated to Shostakovich and his family, because uh, that's the street where every day Shostakovich uh, was coming to eat. For an artist of Bolshoi Theater and Shostakovich in the uh, building of Nacional, National Hotel, was a canteen. Uh, there also temporary was a French consulate, which was also evacuated from Moscow. Nowadays, Samara is one of the biggest cities of Russia with a population of 1.2 million residents. The city, which is being located along Volga River, stretched on a distance of 50 kilometers now. But the historical city center of Samara is still its real gem. Historical parts with a true 400 years history. Kuybyshev Street is one of those where you can read the city like a book of history. One floor, old wooden buildings, two, three floors, uh, stone merchant houses, uh, hotels, northern modern in the world, more known as Ar Nouveau buildings, early Soviet Union Stalinist residential buildings, uh, some of brand new buildings in the historical city center as well, but fortunately not that much yet. So you definitely can enjoy the historical uh, atmosphere. I definitely want to get back to Samara in the summertime to learn more about the city itself. Kind of old school trams and trolley buses gives its own special charm here as well. p.m. and now the quintessence of this day an hour from now at 9 p.m. the performance of Dmitry Shostakovich seventh symphony I got back to the memorial of Dmitry Shostakovich and going right to the theater the concert today starts at 9 p.m. nowadays in Russia the concerts never starts at 9 seven, sometimes eight, but no layer. But today, in order to save the uh, historical fact, because on the 5th of March, 1942, they have started us at 9 p.m. Back then, people, the workers, to come from factories, they were need more time. So it used to start uh, later. symphony with the musicians of Bolshoi Theater, conducted by Samuel Samasud. to believe but today here is the woman who 78 years ago was at that first premiere of the seventh symphony she gives an interview now let's listen Nelly Kandelakia, she is 86 years old now and was only eight when, together with her mother, she came to the very first premiere of uh, Leningrad's Great Symphony here. She sincerely said that, actually, uh, don't remember everything in details, but just remember the impression was as giant as she became the professional musician for all of her life. 
Хотя и тогда такое впечатление на меня произвело все, что я стала профессиональным музыкантом. Я 50 лет проработал в музыкальном нашем факультете, на фортепианном факультете. Дмитрий Азаров, the governor of Samara region, the man who's staying with her. He said that the uh, local government now working on the regular festival of Dmitry Shostakovich in Samara. The students of uh, an art schools of Samara draw the pictures dedicated to Dmitry Shostakovich and his Seventh Symphony. of Seventh Symphony now starts with this epic music full of motivation and courage. I would call it like the theme of industrialization. It's a very optimistic major melody where you can imagine yourself how people are constructing the fabrics, metro stations, aircrafts, develop the life around, composers are writing the music, people are going to the theaters, progress is going. But later we will hear how the theme is getting quieter and quieter, like it moves us to the nature of Russia, to Russia's endless provincial fields somewhere on the border of a country. Then we will hear a kind of stupid and unstoppable party of drums. It is a military march drum rhythm. But in the very beginning of drums, it's hard to say yet that this is the beginning of a terrible march of Nazis. Because they are like so far yet, but they are getting closer and closer, and it's getting more and more clear that it's nothing but an invasion of fascist Russia, the death machine destroying everything on its way. Shostakovich was such a master to depict it all in his music. Happy life with the big hopes for the future, interrupted by Nazis but which met the resistance of the Red Army and victory of Soviet people in culmination of the first parts of symphony, but also birds of grounds and misery after all. He depicted that even if you're winning in the war, there is still going to stay a long time pain and ruins in the hearts, a misery for many, many decades. The symphony was finished in the end of 1941, three and a half years before the victory. So he was a real predictor and the one who, with his music, gave a lot of inspiration to Soviet people and soldiers. The symphony was broadcasted all over Soviet Union on the radio and performed all over the world. 
it clearly gave an understanding to the whole planet that Russia never give up a life and will keep fighting until the end. One of Nazi soldiers recalled in his memoirs that when he listened to the 7th Symphony on the radio, he understood that they will lose the war, because it's impossible to be the nation which is being oppressed so much, however, writing such a music. Dmitry Shostakovich is one of the most significant composers ever, who became one of the greatest influencers of the music of 20th century. Seventh Symphony is far not the only of his most significant masterpieces. He wrote 15 symphonies, 15 string quartets, two piano concerts, two cello concerts, music for movies, opera, ballads and more. You have to keep it pretty clear that Dmitry Shostakovich is a greatness and power, unbelievable depth of a composer's mind.
Thank you.